So a lot of people who are not in these relationships wonder why narc magnets won't leave. Um, I'm calling them narc magnets. A lot of people call them, you know, empaths, codependents. Okay, why won't they leave? Let's address that. Oftentimes, it's because of feeling trapped, powerless, lack of support from others, knowing very little about their finances or that of the relationships. And it goes back to those self-worth and insecurity issues that I mentioned earlier. What's gone on has been very traumatizing. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that. In terms of feeling trapped, a lot of times narc magnets can feel that their spouse is in a dominating role and they're not able to leave and support children apart from this partner. And there is some truth to it. You know, Jordan Peterson once remarked about the studies that have been done indicating that people who divorce with children, the mass majority of them are doomed to a life of poverty. Yes, there are always exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, uh, this is the reality. And Particularly so if you are partnered with a narcissist because chances are you are not going to get this person to be responsible for their bills, for their children, for their anything. And so, you know, if you are married to this person and you have children with them, you may feel that your best chance at getting anything out of them is to stay right under their nose, to keep the children right under their nose. And it might also be that you frankly just have no other alternative in extreme cases you might have no money or you simply don't have access to it and that is what's making you stuck you're not able to leave because you frankly do not have the money or the access to the money and this is all by design so that you stay in that marriage now the codependent empath narc magnet however you prefer to term it they know very little about their finances or that of the couple in terms of the resources and the debt that they have or they share. Because they're not treated as an equal person with equal access to funds. Even though they deserve to be, they're not. They have been regarded by the narc as irrelevant or too ignorant to make competent financial decisions. Remember I said previously in other videos that the narc thinks they're special. They think that they know better than everybody else and that gives them the right to make unilateral decisions for everybody else without their knowledge or consent. And so after being treated this way, disregarded for so long, the empath actually is in an incompetent position. They actually don't know what's going on. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I know some of you may think to yourselves, especially if you haven't been in this situation, well, my gosh, you know, why would somebody allow themselves to be treated that way? <clears throat> you don't know. This person might have asserted themselves time and again, only to sit back and watch the narc do whatever, whenever with the money. And they might have finally just thrown their hands up in the air and, and just given up because they were already in the marriage, they were already with had kids, by the time they figure this out, they're in too deep. And they realize that every time they try to sit down and have transparency about money, the narc might, you know, smile on their face, tell them what they want to hear, and always goes and does something entirely different, whatever they want, loses the money, misappropriates the money, lies about the money. It's never a straight story. And so finally, the empath just concedes like okay fine have it your way because apparently every time I try to talk to you it's smoke and mirrors I, I'm never going to get a straight story out of you it's a total waste of time to sit down and try to ask questions or get involved because we know at the end of the day you're making the final decisions and so they get strong-armed into passivity if they want to keep the family together if they want to keep the marriage together. It's a coping mechanism. Remember, the narc communicates about money to purposefully keep them in the dark. So they're not ever going to get the truth, even if they try to assert themselves and get more actively involved. There's also this element of powerlessness, which I've kind of already alluded to, you know, how you just get this feeling of, utter uselessness to to try to share power in this dynamic over time 
you feel that you're powerless to access resources, powerless to have transparency and accountability. In the example I gave before, this kind of exploitation leaves you with limited opportunities, maybe income from jobs or businesses. It also leaves you with limited leverage in terms of being able to get credit to finance more opportunities. So with a NARC, you may have little or no monetary allowance given to you at all, and they will monitor and question every expense. Or at least when there's a problem, let's see, when they spend all the money and they're trying to figure out what happened and, you know, point the finger at who's to blame, then they're going to go in and start questioning all of your expenses, but never theirs, right? So this, again, this powerlessness that comes out of this exploitation leaves you finding it difficult to get employment, maybe, you know, like a wardrobe, transportation, childcare, bank accounts so that you can have your paychecks direct deposited, IDs. There's a whole number of things if you think about it, but if you, you have no bank account to deposit your paychecks because this person has trashed your bank accounts and you can't get a bank account anymore. It, it's a serious roadblock to getting financial independence and empowering yourself. I remember applying for a job once very shortly after my credit was destroyed by my ex and it was in the financial sector. And right off the bat, they said, you do understand that you'll have to pass a credit check. And I, it was in an interview actually. And I was very honest with the lady. And I said, actually, I just went through a situation where somebody didn't pay me and that caused my credit to take a hit. And this woman who looks like she hasn't had a problem in her life, everything is well maintained in her life, no no lack at all, looked at me with this raised eyebrow like, what kind of riffraff are you that you didn't have your act together? We, we, we're not hiring somebody like that. Even though I presented in every other way that was promising, that right there can block you from a job if you're trying to work in certain sectors where they do a credit check and you can't pass it, well, I guess you don't get that job now, right? And that's what happened to me. So this is just one example of how your employment opportunities get sabotaged. Similarly, educational advancement can be sabotaged where, you know, every time it's time for you to take a test, they want to pick a fight. They want to start a fight and get you to get distracted and fail your test, you know? Remember, this is somebody who does not want you empowered. I don't care what they say. They are very insecure people. They want to maintain the upper hand. They do not want you empowered to the point where if they misbehave, you can leave. Deep down, they know that their behavior is unacceptable and the only person who would sit there and put up with it is somebody who has no other options. And they know it. They're insecure and at some level, deep down, even if it's subconscious, they know it. The empath, the narc magnet, may also resign themselves to not being able to get agreement or truth or follow through, as I mentioned before. Um, therefore, they just play passive to keep the peace. They know that this person is just going to lie to them. They're, they're never going to get the truth out of them. And that if they confront this person about it, they're going to be accused of picking fights, stirring up strife when holding the other person accountable. They're just going to be gaslit is all that's going to happen. The person might smile in their face, say they agree to the budget, and then they blow it. And then they lie about it. And it just becomes too much of a struggle, a predictable pattern that you know this is how it goes down with this person, so why bother? And you resign yourself to this powerlessness. The other issue is the lack of support from others, you know, is a, is a reason why oftentimes they won't leave. And unfortunately, others get very confused when this happens, very confused about who is the actual victim. Extended family gets to a point where they want nothing to do with either of you. Because they associate you with continual drama. Like I said, guilt by association. Maybe the narc is acting like Riff Raff. And then they look at you like, well, I guess you're Riff Raff too. Because you hang around Riff Raff. If you come from a family where people have their finances in order. And you are always on the brink of 
getting evicted or having your car repoed or something of that nature, well, they start looking at you like poor white trash or fill in the blank. I, I hate to talk like that, but you know what I'm saying when I say it, okay? Those stereotypes, which I'm not saying I agree with. I'm just saying that's how other people think. And then you get treated like the black sheep of the family because you get put in that category. And they don't understand that, you, you know, you're actually the solid person here. You're actually the one providing security and stability and you're being exploited. But when people can't figure this out, what do they do? They just, they don't invite you to family gatherings anymore. They avoid you like the plague. They talk about you when you're not around. Oh, did you hear what happened? Her car got repoed or, oh, they got evicted again or their lights got shut off again or, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. And it's, it's trash talking. People said, oh, you know, don't go around them. They're going to ask you for money or, you know, whatever. Very humiliating stuff going on. Even if you never ask any of these people for money, they just like, they want to get away from you for fear of that because of rumors going around in the family. And some of you might wonder, like you might not even be aware that this stuff's going on in your family. Some of you are. <laughs> some of you aren't aware of it. You just know that when you show up to family gatherings, people kind of treat you different. They, they don't really get too deep with you. They don't get involved. They, when you show up, they kind of look at you apprehensively like they know something and you don't know what they know and you can't put your finger on it. Oh, somebody's been talking about you. <laughs> Remember, many narc victims, they come from dysfunctional families. That's how we track narcs, because we come from families of narcissism where it's normalized. We're used to being dis disregarded. We're used to being not treated as a priority. We're used to being exploited. We're used to being the giver around a lot of takers. And that's how this whole relationship also gets going because of that childhood training that we received. And so if you're coming from a dysfunctional family, chances are you didn't get support from the family before the narc and you surely aren't going to get support from them after the narc. Because remember, when we're talking about narcs, it's not their problem. It never is. Even when it is, not their problem. So back to the self-worth and security issues. Uh, these are extremely demoralizing and traumatizing. Demoralizing because it destroys your confidence and abilities. You know, you get humiliated because you don't have enough money maybe at the grocery store. Maybe you have to borrow from family or sit in line at a food pantry or use food stamps at the checkout line and you are seen as a charity case. Maybe you're the one who's always left having to address the landlords, the bill collectors. You're begging them not to evict you. You're begging them not to cut the, the lights off again. Uh, you're trying to negotiate because the narc who said they paid but didn't pay is MIA, missing in action. And they're leaving you there to hold the bag and to answer for them. Narcs will avoid confrontation with people that they owe money to and they'll let you deal with it on your own. And they're not going to be shamed about it at all, at all. <laughs> and then you will appear stupid to these people because you can't give them any straight or solid answers. Why? Because the narc you're depending on makes sure that you never have them. Or whatever they say that you then say makes you out to be a liar because see, you believe the lies. The narc told you, I'm gonna get paid on Friday and I'm gonna pay that bill on Friday. So you tell the landlord, oh, we're gonna pay you on Friday, but then the narc doesn't get paid on Friday because they weren't even working the last week or two. And then when you don't have the money to give the landlord, then you're, then you're the liar. You see what I'm saying? This is the kind of nonsense that goes on. You believe the lies, therefore you repeat the lies. And after this financial abuse occurs, you are then gaslit. You are blamed for what you're told isn't happening. Maybe you're said, told things like, you're just trying to control me and start a fight, which is projection. You know, they're projecting that. They're, they're, they're actually the ones who started the fight. Like if you would have just done what you said, there wouldn't be a fight here now, would there? I mean, we had an agreement, we were all good but then you didn't follow through. So that's actually when you started the fight, see? But they're projecting that and they're making it out that you're the one who's picking the fight because you're calling them out on what they didn't do. 
Another way they can gaslight is say, well, I had to lie to you because you never support me with my goals. This is blame shifting. This is also forcing your participation in something that you wouldn't go along with, right? Like they wanted to leave a job that really you couldn't afford for them to leave at the time. You have children. Maybe at some level they talked about it. They felt they were feeling you out, how you stood on the issue. And you told them, look, I don't think now's a good time for you to leave this job or to start a new business. I, I just don't feel secure at this time. What do they do? They leave it anyway. They quit the job. They don't tell you about it. And then when you can't pay your bills because there's no income, well, now all of a sudden your hand is forced to support their new little business that they wanted to start to begin with, that you told them you didn't want to do. And why? Because it's your only source of survival. They quit the job that you asked them not to. They can't go back. So now you're left with only one source of, of income, which is to get on board with their plan that they had from the beginning, which was to start a new business that none of you can afford. So all of this is very traumatizing and it, it triggers a lot of anxiety in people who already have self-worth and security issues. And they get triggered whenever they're talking about finances. And I'm telling you, some of you, you don't bring up money because you know from past experience, you tried and you've learned that if you bring it up, it's gonna be a fight and you're never gonna get the truth. So anytime anyone you know, brings up talk of finances or even just thinking about it, you are easily triggered with anxiety. There's also chronic financial insecurities that come up having to do with food, shelter, money in general, fear of not having enough. There are lack mentalities that are common because of the insecurity. Fear of loss that even if you gain something that is going to be taken away from you. And the learned powerlessness, you know, I spoke of it a bit earlier, but there's this traumatization that occurs where you realize that the narc will always ensure that they come out on top, no matter what, no matter what it costs you or others. And no matter what they say, what they tell you, what they promise you, you will never win with them. Never. And when you realize the futility of trying to get fairness in this relationship, you learn powerlessness. There's also chronic financial insecurities that come up for victims of this abuse, where the victim either becomes extremely aggressive in doing damage control with the narc. And then, yeah, again, this looks confusing to outsiders because then that person looks like they're the mean bad person. They're trying to lay down some boundaries and rules and have accountability and, and consequences and whatnot. And they look like they're being extremely aggressive and it's totally inappropriate. Or uh, there can be passivity after feeling like the resistance is just, you know, resisting the narc is futile. These are very unhealthy extremes that are coming out of chronic financial insecurities. And finally, compromised health. You live with this kind of trauma, repeated trauma, habitual, you know, trauma for how many years, decades. I'd be surprised if you come out of it without any health problems. I mean physical health problems where you're not able to relax due to constantly having your security undermined. Your adrenals could be tapped out. You, you may be dealing with hypothyroidism, leaky gut, uh, hormone imbalances, because you're always in flight or fight mode from the trauma and you don't know how to escape it. You don't have the resources or the support to escape it. Your only option is to try to cope with it. If you want to watch the next video in this series, then click here. Or if you want to watch my narcissism playlist, click here. Also, if you're interested in my book on narcissism, check it out at Amazon, Audible, Kindle. Links are down below. Till next time, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing.